Uh, nice to see you. Good to see you, man. Long yeah, time. It's, yeah, it's been a while. Uh, you know, we first met back at the, the Summer Rush Days at uh, Canada's Wonderland. Uh, you know, oh, yeah. great uh, Melanie doing the first run of uh, La Bouche back in the uh, 90s. And you were in town about uh, six and a half years ago and did a show with uh, with London Beat and Hathaway and our very own Joey yeah. here in town. And you're oh, coming yeah. back on Friday for an even bigger and better event. That was an intimate show. Uh, I was yeah, a good yeah. crowd, but this is going to be an outdoor festival. It's going to be an open air festival. We're kicking off summertime and you, Lane McCrane and LaBouche will be a part of the experience. We're excited to have you. Are you excited to come back? Dude, I'm so excited to come back. You know, um, it's been one of those kind of things where Canada was like one of the first people to embrace us on, you know, North America. And yeah. Emma, I would I say the it. first. I would say the first. Yeah. I remember a record company guy by the name of uh, Vince DiGiorgio. He was yeah. also a writer. And Vince yeah. brought me the first record of Sweet Dreams. And we played that song on the radio. And I'm like, this is amazing. This is this is the new yeah. wave of Euro dance music. This is the direction we're going to be going in years. But th did you ever think when Sweet Dreams came out that you would be doing this 30 years later? Almost 30 years, right? Uh, yeah, right on 30 years. Yeah. You know, I have to say that, you know, with Vince bringing you guys the record was pretty much how the song got out there yeah. with, um, uh, in Germany, you know, nobody wanted the record. So they sent it to Scorpio music in Paris. No one wanted it there. So the guy sent it to a DJ friend in Italy. Right. They planted, and then Kelly Swinesburg from logic. I mean, she walked us around to every DJ handed them the record. They played it. So it was a lot of work to get it done, but, um, it's still a standard. People still play it. Um, and it's just, I never in my wildest dreams would have imagined that it would still be around all these years later. Right. So, that, do you, do you have a personal that. favorite of La Bouche, whether it's uh, Sweet Dreams or Be My Lover, Fall in Love, I Love to Love? Yeah, I, I'm sure, you know, the people, we always do these lists of the top Euro songs of all time. And yeah. know, Be My Lover is on that list at number one more often than not. What is your personal favorite that you guys did? Ooh, um, of the hits, um, <laughs> there's so many babies. I mean, you have all these babies, yeah. and they're all your babies. It's like asking somebody, like, who's your favorite child? I know it's a I tough know. question, Lane. <laughs> um, well, I'm kind of partial to the runs, you know, that I kind of co wrote, you know, seven of those. Um, right. but I will tell you that Be My Lover probably holds um, a special place in both my heart and Melanie's heart because this was a real situation. Mm. Uh, we were singing in a cover band before we even excelled to any kind of popularity, right. Um, there was a little, little something, something going on chemically between right. the two. A little, little chemistry happening there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in between sets, you know, we sit there, kind of drying off, drinking water. She said, so how do you feel about mixing business and pleasure? Woo. Uh, I said, like, wow, because she was very direct. Okay, yeah. she was very Grace Jones about, you know, how she approached the guys. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, it's been my experience that it doesn't really work because I was on a show um, some years ago prior to that. And I had a little part with this girl that I was supposed to be, you know, in the show. And we yeah. were dating. She was pissed off at me. She <laughs> didn't look at me, dude. Uh, and I felt so insignificant. So if you've got the right two people, sure, it could probably work. And we've had some examples of that. And, you know, Sunny and Cher, Marvin and Tammy, Captain and right. Jimmy Wow. And I just kind of left it at that. And, um, and then a few weeks later, we're in the studio. Got this little tune. Melanie starts writing, looking back on all the time that we spent together. You should know by now if you want to be my lover. And I was like, wow. Love that. Great lyrics, um, right? I hear what you're saying. I, I see what you're doing, but I need to know a little bit more about you before I, you know, try to dive into this. And, you know, once the song came out, we were both dating other people, so it wasn't an issue anymore. So. <laughs> Would that be my lover now? It's uh, It has a new lease on life. And oh, yeah. I've been watching some of your videos online. You are just grooving to the new version from uh, from David Guetta and uh, and Hypaton. And you know, there's always that argument of whether people should touch that classic because the classic is always going to live in our hearts. But I always argue with people and you know debate and discuss the situation that it also helps to bring new light and a new lease on life for a song that maybe people didn't even know and brings it to a new audience, right? Sure, sure. You know, and that happens. You know, historically, it always happens, right? Right. Uh, I think for me. If you're going to do a cover song, you really need to kind of reinvent it to make it so far from the original. Yeah. Because otherwise, you just have a copy. And, and the song's been done by a lot of lesser artists, if right. you will. And, and this um, is a, this this is a remix of the original yes. vocals, right? Yes. yes. So not so much as a, a cover, and uh, they did it with respect. And uh, it's going to get get played all summer long at every festival. It's being played, right? But I tell you what cover or what version that I really do like is when we released last year with um, 
this guy named Bandito from Florida. Okay. Uh, it had this kind of reggaeton rap to it. Uh, and it was just made you want to jump up. The day to get I'm gonna get my uh, producer to check that out right now. Somehow we missed yeah. that track. So uh, Brandon, check that out. <laughs> okay. Yeah, being all over featuring Bandito. Okay. Um, but I will have to say that sometimes songs like hit me immediately. Right. Sometimes they kind of sneak up and had to grow on me. And I've, this David Guetta Hybiton had done that to me. Yeah. And I, I was like, okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm feeling it. So, so we've included it in the show. Um, and I'm doing all my little Instagram and TikTok videos and, um, and it's blowing up. It's going viral. Everybody wants to see Lane move, man. Uh, you're moving like I haven't seen you move in a long, long time, brother. <laughs> dude, I was like these hamstrings, dude. I'm like, okay. I almost popped one. And I was like, what are you out? So, yeah. uh, who tours with you right now? Because uh, is it uh, Sophie uh, Kyra that's coming to the Toronto show? I'd heard Bell Johnson. Um, who's the yeah. female lead with you? Um, well, you know, I've got three girls that I use, not right. use, but work with, um, just trying to, you know, give someone an opportunity to step into a different arena. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's not common. She just got back from Australia. Okay. Um, but Belle Johnson is my North America girl. Okay. And, uh, and yeah. she's fabulous. She's really great. Um, sweetheart, great energy. Uh, you guys are going to love her in Canada. Yeah. Uh, did you ever think like, you know, when, you know, tragically uh, Melanie passed away and we all miss her dearly, did you ever think that that was going to be the end of the LaBruche project? Or did you think to yourself, like, this is something I have to continue on for Melanie to keep the legacy going and for yourself as well? Well, realistically, if you look at, you know, the business, especially in, in Europe, you know, once, you know, records fail, they stop selling, labels drop you, blah, 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 blah. Right. When Melanie passed away, I I mean, I took a couple of years off to contemplate life and all the good stuff. and Right. Uh, self-medicated with you know alcohol and was drinking at eight o'clock in the morning just trying to numb myself from the loss mm -hmm. uh when i started on the upswing coming back i went to our agent at the time and i'll not mention his name okay uh, but he literally told me that labouche was dead it died with melanie and perhaps i should find a real job wow. totally negating any contribution that i made to the group tough skin no problem mm -hmm. uh, it, it made you stronger i think uh Absolutely. overcoming that Right. Um, yeah, absolutely. So I got back because that comment did not stop you. And, you know, eventually you went back on the road when the time was right. And, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, you have to know in your heart, you know, while you're out here, I'm not out here to be rich or famous. I'm out here because I love doing what I do. Um, and in part two, to honor Melanie's memory. Um, and it was tough after she passed away doing shows and releasing music. And the fans are very you know, oh, this is horrible. You know, there's only one Melanie Thornton. I said, absolutely, there's only one Melanie Thornton. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. I said, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? You know, yeah. like do nothing at all or or carry and continue the legacy, <clears throat> which we yep. appreciate and we respect. Like, I, I thank you for keeping that that dream alive. And you guys are still doing what you're doing after uh, all these Ain't years. No, and, and I don't think Melanie would have wanted you to stop because it's part no, of your passion as well. And it's... um. And there's not a day that goes by, Tony, that yeah. I don't think of her mm. or some funny anecdote or some situation we were in. Yeah. Uh, we're just thinking about her, you know, and it's hard not to, you know, because we basically were married you know, at the hip for for 78 years. And um, but I do believe that, you know, God has a plan and a purpose for all of us, you know, and I'm living the life that he designed for me, specifically for me, you know, and. Um, some people will like it. Some people won't. So um, we established a really great uh, work ethic. You know, promoters loved working with us. You know, we were always on time, never any issue, no problems, always delivered a great show. Um, and, you know, that's 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 kind of that can't always be said by a lot of different artists that uh, that go on the road. So, you know, well, yeah. we, we, we've had to deal with those and uh, you've always been a stand up guy. So uh, we, well, we I've, heard, I've heard all the yeah. stories. And, I know <laughs> and, and people, maybe some of the tours that you're on when you go in Europe, you come across some of those. Right. <laughs> well, especially the 90s artists, man, you've got to be realistic and be and have some gratitude that people still want to hear you all these years later. You know, yeah. you're yeah. not, you know, the entourages and the the opulence and all this other stuff this is work this is a job you know those right. people on stage are great 
but the and, work and we're putting you to work next week. We're putting you to work. Yeah. We're getting you on stage. Uh, you got the legendary king of freestyle, Stevie B. I had a chance yeah. to uh, chat with uh, the <clears throat> queen of freestyle, Shannon, yesterday. Uh, Shervani from uh, Black Box, our very own. Yeah. Uh, Joey. We got uh, Thea Austin from Snap just added to the lineup. Another right. local Canadian artist, uh, MJ. So it, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and uh, we definitely uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next Friday. Uh, you were raised in the States. How did you end up in Germany? Um, Air Force. You know, I joined right. the Air Force at 18 because uh, yeah. I didn't want to go to school at the time. And um, I ended up in Germany. Um, and that's where I met Melanie. And, you know, the rest is history. You know, this is all before social media and cell phones and all yeah. this stuff. Um, and so when I would, you know, call home and tell my mom, you know, I'm going to be in this group and blah, 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 blah. And we're going to be at, you know, at spring break and MTV. She's <laughs> like, yeah, that's, that's nice, baby. You know, <laughs> <laughs> what, what did you know that you would be a singer of it? Was it a dream that you had uh, all your life or you just, Hey, one day you're in the shower and you start singing and it's like, Hey man, I got a good voice. <laughs> no, 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 I didn't have a good voice. At no. some <laughs> so, um, I actually grew up thinking that I was going to be a minister um, okay. because um, my mom told me when she was pregnant that she asked God to give her a son. And that if he did, that she would give him back. And I look at this as she gave me back, not necessarily to be a minister, but we do minister in a, a, a way. Right. Right. And um, I think, um, yeah, I mean, growing up, you know, I was a trumpet player, but I was in the band, high school band, um, and I was a dancer, you know, that was, that was my passion, break right. dancing, um, all the breaking, electric boogaloo, all those movies, those were my wheelhouse. Um, and then I got on the show with the Air Force Entertainment and they asked me to, to sing. I was like, mm, okay. <laughs> Let's so, see how this works out. <laughs> yeah. So I did like songs like Bad, uh, Bare Man, a little Swing Street, uh, some patriotic stuff. Uh, and once I finished that tour, I ended up, you know, in West Side Story. I ended up in La Boheme. I ended up in um, um, several, you know, musical, regional musicals that let me hone my craft, if you will. Right. And um, it's like pretty amazing. The best piece of advice that you can give and something that you can take and, and, and give it to artists out there, other than reading the contracts, something that you've learned along the way, the best life lesson, whether it was from your parents, something in the army, yeah, well, I would say you know, tough skin. You know, this right. business is built on rejection. So if you're not used to hearing no, your feelings are going to get hurt, you know. Yeah. Um, and just be true to yourself. You know, if you have a sp specific music style that you want to do, um, be open to the possibilities of trying something that someone may bring to the table. But ultimately, you have the decision. Okay. So, um, and call people. Information is free. I tell people all the time, give me a right. call. You know, yeah, I don't know everything. Kick, kick it old school. Pick up the phone and call yeah. people. You know, I mean, this is great that we're doing uh, the Zoom calls here and whatnot, and seeing people. Know, know, so yeah, it's important to connect with people too. Yeah. Right? We can't lose that connection. So everybody just you know gets on their devices and they text one another and stuff. We we still got to talk to one another. Yeah, and look, I don't know everything, but I, I know a little bit. You know, after thirty yeah. years of business, um, we can learn from one another, right? Absolutely, have each other's backs. Yeah. Let's do a quick uh, fast five here. Uh, your favorite singer of all time, somebody that inspired you or just somebody you still listen to to this day. Johnny Mathis. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Great voice. Favorite TV show growing up. Favorite TV show growing up would have to be Gilligan's Island. Oh yeah. Did they ever get off the Island? <laughs> uh, I, think I think they did yeah. in the movie not in the original think, series but no. in the movie eventually they did then they got yeah. stranded again right <laughs> I know <laughs> is, is there a, a favorite TV show that you're binge watching right now and streaming if you have time uh, I'm a ancient aliens like just I love the, the whole series yeah. so anything to do with that I'm on it mm -hmm. uh, favorite food something you can have each and every day mm hmm I don't want to say the obvious. Um, For me, I'll, I'll say the obvious pizza. I'm a pizza guy, Lane. Okay. Yeah. yeah I'm going to say I'm a chicken sandwich, um, Burger King. Right. My, my no. producer, he's uh, he's agreeing with you. He's yeah. like, yeah, I'm all over that. <laughs> no tomato, but fries, you know. Um, yeah. And favorite city you've ever visited? Other than Toronto, because we know that's your favorite. Oh, well, I'll just say Paris. Yeah. The city and of love. 
City of Love is every time I'm there, I feel like I don't feel like a big rock star. I feel like a supermodel. I feel like uh, mm -hmm. the wind's blowing. I'm walking in slow motion. <laughs> I don't know what it is about it, but um, it could be my my ex girlfriend was there too. So it might be ah, there. some stories. Yeah. City of Love with Lane, but that we'll leave that for another day. We already got some tea from you earlier with the uh, with the late great uh, Melanie. And we uh, appreciate that. So thank you for taking the time. We look forward to uh, seeing you. Uh, tickets still, some general admission tickets are available. All the VIP booths are completely sold out. There's some tables that are available. Uh, it's going to be amazing. Thousands and thousands of people. Open air festival at Downsview Park. We look forward to seeing you, Lay McRae and Labouche, next Friday.